Hello, real quick before we start, I want to say thank you for 800,000 subscribers. I plan to do a Q&A video, so leave questions down below. Also, I want to let you all know that I released a new chapter of my webcomic on my webcomic channel, and there's a link in the description. Okay, now into the video. Hello everyone, in this week's video, I'm drawing my OCs into opposite genres. So I was trying to brainstorm a video idea as I do every week. <laughs> and as I was thinking, I thought it might be fun to design more characters or do more character design challenges because I find those fun, but I don't really need to create more characters. So I decided against that. I instead thought of an idea where I draw my existing characters in an alternate universe or the opposite genre that their story is. I thought this sounded like a fun concept, so I decided to go with it. It'll allow me to explore my characters in new ways. The first character I wanted to try drawing in an opposite genre is my OC Pariah. As many of you know, she is a fairy or elf-like creature and her story takes place in a fantasy world. Before drawing Pariah in a new way, I felt like I should draw her as she usually appears, since it's been a while since I drew her full design as it would appear in her story. I do want to clarify I have not written or made Pariah's story, it's just one that lives in my head at the moment. And it's been up there for many years. <laughs> it's been a really long time since I drew Pariah in what I call her default outfit. It has a yellow collared shirt and a dress made out of leaves with stems wrapped around her waist. I don't draw very many illustrations of Pariah, and in the one I did most recently, she wasn't wearing this outfit. Mostly because I didn't feel like drawing the skirt, it sounded too troublesome. Uh, so like I said, Priya's story is set in a fairy fantasy world, so the opposite of that would be a non-fantasy world. So she would just be in the normal human world, doing normal human things. Another part of Priya's story is that she's kind of an outcast, because she's unable to grow plants like the other people. And you know, now that I think of it, maybe I should have made Priya be super popular in the human world. My brain instantly went to how can I make her be an outcast in the human world and I went with that. But for it to be totally opposite, she would need to be popular, right? I don't know. <laughs> the point of this isn't to totally change the character itself, it's more to put them into new places. So I would think she would still be an outcast in the human world. Anyways, as I was thinking, I thought maybe Priya could be from a small town that's surrounded by forests. But then, for some reason, she has to move to a big city. And an industrial city is very different from Pariah's forest fantasy world. So I felt like that was the direction I wanted to go. Now I just need to think of the composition for this picture. And tell me to do that, I'm going to use JustSketch.me, the sponsors of today's video. Give depth to your characters with the best pose reference tool on the web. Just Sketch Me allows you to spend less time planning and more time creating art. Just Sketch.me has a super wide range of characters, poses, props, animals, and so much more. Your imagination is the limit. Sometimes I have an idea in my head, but I'm having a hard time executing it. So I often use 3D models to help me plan out scenes and angles and help me with the perspective. Having something to reference makes the process so much more smooth. One part about JustSketch.me that is super helpful is that I can intricately pose the hands of a model to exactly how I want. Hands can be really tricky to draw, but being able to make a reference in the pose and perspective that I want is so helpful. JustSketch.me is available on iOS, Mac, Windows, Android, and it's also available for free with no time limit. The first 100 people to use my code L2DM to sign up for Just Sketch Me Pro will get 20% off. I encourage you to check out JustSketch.me. It's a super helpful tool and I highly recommend it. As you can see, I made this reference that has Pariah kind of looking up and she's in a three quarter view. And I also had some props in the background. And I liked this idea, but I didn't love it. I kind of wanted us to be able to see her hat more. It's going to have a city logo on it, kind of like one of those tourist hats that people get when they travel. I thought it was kind of a cute idea. So I made this mock-up where we are looking down at Pariah and she's surrounded by people. I did a super rough sketch to see if I liked this concept and I felt like I did so I moved on to the cleanup sketch. Because I am drawing Pariah in the real world, I thought I should draw her in my normal style instead of my chibi elf style. And wow, it's been a really long time since I drew Pariah in my normal style. I'm trying to think of the last time I did but I can't really remember. There is the illustration I did a handful of years back. I'll see if I can find it. 
It's one where I did my redesign of Pariah. She used to look really different and then I redesigned her to this design. And then I started drawing her in my chibi elf style when I created that style of drawing. It's kind of funny because the chibi elf style was created when I was drawing in a smaller sketchbook. I didn't have much space in the sketchbook and I found it hard to draw full body characters. Because of this, I tried drawing characters with simpler proportions that were able to fit on the paper. And for some reason, a lot of these figures ended up being elves. So yeah, then this style was born. And I am glad I created it and started drawing Pariah in this way. I think it's a nice way to make her universe feel different from my other characters. So about the illustration, one thing that did feel very different about this picture is that it included background characters. And I don't put background characters very often in my illustrations. They are more used in my webcomic. Because of this, I wasn't sure if I should draw them with faces or without faces. I decided to go with them having no facial features, mostly because I don't want them to draw away attention from Pariah. Plus, I intend to apply a decent amount of blur to the background characters so the details won't matter too much. Plus, I didn't feel like taking the time to draw their faces. <laughs> I always hate drawing background characters. Like, they are needed and do provide liveliness to the background. But they add so much more work for what feels like not much benefit. <laughs> Which is why in my webcomic, a lot of times the background characters are just purple silhouettes. Um, if they need to talk or say something or specifically interact with the characters, uh, then I'll draw actual background characters. But yeah, a lot of times I'm lazy. I was a bit nervous to draw a city background. I've discussed in previous videos how backgrounds with architecture aren't my strong suit. That's another reason why I decided on this video concept. I knew it would push me to draw things that I don't usually draw since I am placing my characters in opposite scenarios. For the background, I kind of just kept trying to place things in places that felt like they needed something. Like I put a light post, a car, trash can with trash bags. I just tried to make things feel not empty. And now that the rough sketch is done, it's time for line art. Because I find it satisfying, I'll show you some slower shots of the line art. For this video, I did want to do a bit more exploring with the characters and do concept art or draw different little scenarios, kind of like I did when I was designing Malachi. I really wanted to get a feel for the characters in these new places. However, I ended up not having as much time to work on this video as I had planned. Some things came up and uh, so yeah. I wasn't able to explore things as much as I wanted, but it's okay. I already had six and a half hours of footage for this video, so I probably didn't really need to add more footage. And uh, this isn't the unexpected thing that happened. It was planned, but something I did get to do during the time I was working on this video was that I took engagement pictures with my fiance. It was a lot of fun and the photographer was really nice. As I'm recording this audio, I haven't seen the pictures yet, but I hope they turned out nice and I'm excited to see them. I got dressed up and wore a white dress. I was going to wear a different dress, but it ended up having a defect in the pattern that I didn't notice until I tried it on again. And once I noticed it, it bothered me so much that I had to find something else. Thankfully, I did find something and I do really like the second dress. If I've gotten the engagement pictures back before I need to post this video, maybe I'll insert one or two of them uh, when I'm doing the editing, uh, but I don't know if I'll get them back before I need to upload this video. But if I can insert some, I will. Now we are on to coloring. One part that is usually pretty simple but was more complicated for this picture was filling in the base colors and deciding on colors. The reason why this was more tricky is because there were so many elements so I need to use a decent amount of different colors. But I don't want them to clash. And also I need to make sure to pay attention to the values of the colors. Even when coloring simple illustrations, I try to keep in mind how light or dark the colors are because it makes things more readable and easier to understand. However, when I'm using a bunch of colors or have more complicated backgrounds, keeping the values different can be very tricky. To help with this, I use a adjustment layer and slide the saturation all the way down so the picture has no color. This makes the values easier to see, and if the grays feel too close, I'll make the colors either darker or lighter and play around until I think the contrast looks good. Now that all the colors are decided, I can move on to shading. I wanted the sun to be fairly powerful feeling. I'm thinking it's slightly to the upper right and a bit in front of Pariah. To help the lighting feel powerful, I'm going to need to apply a decent amount of shading. My plan for this picture was to render it a decent amount but not go too crazy. 
I wanted to keep things a bit more simple so that it doesn't take me ages to finish. That being said, I did still add a decent amount of shading. As usual, once I get started, I kind of just keep going. <laughs> I started with adding cell shading, all with the same muted magenta color that I often use. Not having to keep switching colors and layers makes the process go a bit faster. But once I apply all the shading with this color, I lack the transparency and then use a brush to apply different colors for different areas. That way the shading can match a bit better and I can also add more colors to make things interesting and fun. During this, I accidentally turned off Pariah's layer and only the shading layer was left visible. And it was actually kind of cool because you can really see all the color variations in the shading. I don't know, I just thought it looked kind of neat. For the background characters, I kept things really simple and just added cell shading to them along with some gradients. Like I said, I don't want them to stick out much. They are there just to help the background feel like a city, but I do still need to add shading to them so that they have dimension and that they fit in. Also, a lot of my siblings really liked the edgy looking girl. Many of them were like, who's that? Or I like her clothes. <laughs> and I would reply with, she's just a background character. Even though they all don't matter much, I wanted to try to make each one feel a bit different to help the people feel more varied and provide some interest. I also tried to make them all feel different than Pariah, since she's supposed to be the odd one out. To help with the country feel, I made Pariah wear overalls. I thought a dress might feel a bit too out of place for this time period, but the overalls still give her that outdoorsy kind of feel. I also made her clothes her usual colors of green and yellow. I do really like the addition of the city hat. I think it helps give the idea that she's not from around this area. I did consider maybe changing Pariah to not have fantasy colors, like changing her white hair and yellow eyes. But at that point, it would feel like a different character, so I decided to keep those elements the same. Ooh, this part was really fun. To help make the form stand out, I went around and painted in highlights. I would paint them in pretty strongly and then fade them out with a soft brush if I wanted the forms to feel more round. I feel like this helped a lot with making the lighting pop and making the forms have more, uh, form. <laughs> when it comes to how I imagine Pariah being in this world, I think she would be very curious about her new surroundings. And since she is from the countryside, she probably wouldn't really fit in with her new classmates. I imagine Pariah would be trying her best to make friends with people and be really friendly, but everyone around her thinks she's just kind of odd. But maybe eventually she would meet Carson in this universe and they would become friends. That's another thing I wanted to do. I wanted to draw human Carson. Maybe this is something I would have to explore more in a future video. <laughs> but yeah, I imagine Pariah would be very curious and would want to learn all kinds of new things and meet the new people, uh, but she has a hard time fitting in. For rendering the background, I tried to not get too complicated or go into too much detail since I knew I'd be blurring things. So I tried to more just define forms and the shapes. To help ground the characters, I did add cast shadows to the ground. This can be tricky, especially getting the shapes to look right and like the characters are making them, but I kind of just played around with it until it feels good. I also do things like apply textures so that the background feels a bit more organic. Even though this is a city, I don't want things like the road and sidewalk to feel super smooth and perfect. I want them to feel a little bit more varied. For the finishing touches, I added some light rays, some light particles, sun things. I know there's a name for them, but I can't think of it. Is it a lens flare or something? I don't know. I blurred the background like I said I would, and the left side of the road felt empty, so I added in a car. I used a 3D model for this because I was feeling lazy, and I wanted the picture to be done. <laughs> and speaking of the picture being done, here it is. We have a picture of Priya in a very different environment. I really enjoyed working on this picture. It was neat drawing Priya in a new place and in my normal style since I do usually draw her in my chibi elf style. And I am happy with how it turned out. Having the reference for the perspective from just sketch.me was really helpful. And I feel like it turned out looking interesting. For the next opposite genre we are doing, we are going to take my webcomic, My Next Door Neighbors, and draw it as if it was a thriller comic. I thought of this idea because I remember when I first announced my webcomic, some people thought it was going to be a creepy or horror story. And I can totally understand that. The title, My Next Door Neighbors, can seem kind of ominous. <laughs> 
Uh, but it's not a scary story. It's kind of more of a drama story uh, with a bit of romance. I called it a slice of life in the thumbnail because it is also kind of a slice of life. And slice of life kind of felt the most contrasty to thriller or horror. Uh, so yeah, but it's kind of more of a drama story. Anyways, my concept for this drawing is that we are going to have Doris walking through a hallway and some of the doors are going to be open and in the doors we see shadowy figures. A lot of times we would now move on to the cleanup sketch, but I actually want to take more time to talk about the line art and rendering process, so we are going to skip to that. The cleanup process wasn't any different from usual, uh, but the line art and rendering are going to be different from usual, so I want to focus on them a bit more and show them in more detail. My plan for this picture is to keep the shading simple, use more flat colors, and also a very limited color palette. For the line art, I'm trying to use line variation, and I'm also going to fill some areas in completely with black. This will make the shadows be really dark and help provide a mysterious feeling. I notice in many creepy or thriller type comics or webcomics, I see they tend to go with a black and white color scheme and use the line art to define shapes or add extra lines for details. So that's what I'm trying to do for this picture. I try to add extra lines around the eyes and eyebrows to help push the expression and make it look more fearful. And I'll also add more line details to other areas of the picture. When adding line variation, I'll make the line art thicker where I think shadows would appear or at intersections, especially T-shaped or Y-shaped intersections, kind of like in the hair. Later in the footage, I also decided to fill in around the hands, under the arms, under the sleeves, and just anywhere that seemed like it would have shadows with black, like I did with under the head. This part was actually kind of relaxing and fun. A lot of times the line art isn't the star of the show, the coloring is. So putting more time into the line art and how it flows and changes at different spots was kind of fun. When I do line art for my normal illustrations, I do still add some line variation, uh, but I try to push it even more so for this picture since it is more important here. Also, I often mention it, but people always ask what brush I use for line art, and it is the AA ink brush. You can get it from the CSP asset library. I did modify it a bit to fit my needs, so I recommend you do the same if you feel like you need to. When it came to imagining Pariah in a different universe, it wasn't too tricky. However, for this universe, I'm having a harder time imagining it, mostly because it requires characters like Annabelle, Chase, and Brayson to be creepy and they aren't. <laughs> They're my precious little babies. I imagine the story would be maybe more of a mystery, like maybe Doris moved into this building and everyone just seems really weird, or maybe items and things keep going missing and no one knows where they go. I don't know, I'm not a very good person to come up with an actually creepy story, mostly because I'm not a huge fan of stories that are super creepy. But I do enjoy a good mystery story or thriller stories that are a bit lighter and don't get too dark. I do find it interesting how my story preferences have changed in the past year. I used to almost exclusively read romance web comics, but more recently I've been reading action, mystery, fantasy, sci-fi, or drama stories. Many of them do have an element of romance in them, but that's not the main driving force of the story. I don't know, I guess I've found only romance stories to be less interesting since I'm in a relationship of my own now, so now I'm kind of finding other genres to be more interesting. Most of the time when I do line art for backgrounds, I will use a ruler, like the perspective ruler, to keep my lines straight and clean. However, for this picture, I freehanded all the lines to make them be more wobbly on purpose. I thought the more wobbly lines would help add to the feeling of the picture instead of just using super straight clean lines. It did take a bit more work on my part, even if I was okay with the lines being a bit wobbly. When drawing the lines, I try my best to draw from my shoulder instead of my wrist. This makes drawing long straight lines easier, or you know, mostly straight lines. Like I said, I did keep some of the wobble on purpose. <laughs> I also try to add some extra lines to the door and around the knob to make things feel more textured and old. You don't end up seeing this too much since I do apply some blur later. A uh, part of me wonders if I rely on blur a little too much, but I always like the feeling of depth it provides. But I do find it sad how I do lose some detail sometimes. It's a little funny that this picture also has background characters. This time though, they were really simple because they are just silhouettes. I made the two silhouettes match Annabelle and Chase because with where Doris is in the hallway, that's where their apartments are located. Annabelle is across the hall and Chase is to the right of Doris, or you know used to be. <laughs> if you read my webcomic, you know. And Brayson is to the left, so we can't see his apartment in this. 
Uh, so yeah, that's why we don't see Brayson. We only see Annabelle and Chase. Uh, but now it's time for the rendering. It is more simple, but it was still a lot of fun. I wanted the hallway to fade to black to make it feel off-putting. I decided to make the base for the picture be a dark gray. That way I can add darker and lighter values for different areas. Like Doris is going to be lighter to make her pop and some light is pouring into the hallway from the doors. This will help draw our eyes to the shadowy figures since they are by really bright colors. Like with my last picture, I'm trying to keep the values in mind. This is pretty easy with this picture since it's already in grayscale. I try to make sure to keep all the grays different to make things easier to read. To make things interesting and maybe more creepy, I decided to add a pop of red to some areas like the doors and Doris's eyes. This really helps draw the viewer's eyes to the important areas and makes things look kind of neat, I think. This whole time I've been trying to brainstorm exactly what the story is here. Maybe Doris recently moved in and she wants to make friends, but she found out recently that a tenant of this building is rumored to be a murderer and no one knows who it is. So everyone is suspicious of each other and no one can be trusted. But of course, none of my babies end up being the killer, <laughs> but they would all seem really sus. Another thing I did decide to do that was a bit different is I added my usual noise texture and it's a rainbow noise. But I didn't want the noise to add color, so I set it to grayscale. And I also kept it a little stronger than I usually do. I'll usually set it to like 20 or something, but I think I set it to like 30 or 40%. I thought the more prominent texture would help the creepy feeling. So here are my two illustrations of my characters in different genres. It was a kind of random video concept, but it was a ton of fun to do. I got to draw my characters in new ways and see them in different environments. And I got to try some new things, so it was a lot of fun. And it kind of helped me get the feeling that I was designing new characters, even though I wasn't. I really don't need to make more original characters for myself. I have so many at this point. <laughs> if you'd like to see me do this again with more of my OCs, you can let me know. I do have more ideas for more of my characters that I could do. But that is all for this video. And remember to leave questions down in the comments for my subscriber special. And thank you so much again for 800,000 subscribers. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!